This is a relatively short video where we're going to solve problem 6.3.6. .6. It's not labeled as an old actuarial exam problem, but it's a nice little problem I can imagine it being on a future actuarial exam on financial math. We'll be finding a forward rate, given two things, a term structure for zero coupon bonds and the price of a bond with coupons. It's been the last couple videos, number 144 and 145, where we've talked about forward rates and derived the formula in that last video, 145. I'll put a link to it up in the upper right corner here. So if you're interested in knowing where the formula comes from, you should watch that video first. In this video, we'll just make use of the formula, and that's going to help us solve this problem fairly quickly. So we've got the term structure of effective annual yields for zero coupon bonds given as follows. Those with one and two year maturity have effective annual yield of 10%. Those with three and four year maturity have an effective annual yield of 12%. You're also given the price of a five year bond with face amount 100 with coupons, annual coupons, not semi-annual. Not semi -annual. annual coupons, the coupon rate is 5%. It's an annual rate. The coupons themselves are annual, so the, the coupon amount is going to be 100 times 5% or 5. And the price is going to be 73.68. And when you are given term structures, you should assume that that is priced with respect to the term structure, and that's key to solving the problem. We need to find the four-year forward effective annual interest rate that's in effect for the fifth year. Again, we talked about forward rates in the last couple of videos. Here is the formula for the forward rate that we want. F is the notation for a forward rate. Use a subscript that is the interval that's in question. The four-year forward rate is an interest rate in effect four years from now, for one year here, from time four to time five. So this is interval notation. This forward rate is in effect from time four to time five. N is five here. The formula that we derived in the last video is this will equal 1 plus R5 to the fifth, where R5 would be the spot rate for a zero coupon year uh, bond with five year maturity, divided by 1 plus R4 to the fourth power, where R4 is the spot rate for a zero coupon bond with four year maturity, which is given to be 12%, minus one. There's a formula. R4 again is given. Let's go ahead and write down what we're given. R1 and R2 are 0.1. R3 and R4 are 0.12. I can go ahead and plug in 0.12 right away if I like. And so now you see that all that is left is to find R5 and then use this formula. Okay? So evidently, you think about it for a second, you realize evidently the bond that does have coupons must be what we need to use to find R5. 73.68 is its price. 73.68. And it's priced according to the term structure that we see here, these spot rates. In this case, since it's a five-year bond, it would be R1, R2, R3, R4, and R5. So evidently, that equation of value is going to allow us to solve for R5 and then plug in into the original formula up here. We've got five coupons. The first coupon at time one needs to get discounted back to time zero by using the spot rate R1. 1 plus R1 is 1.1. We need to raised to the negative one power to go back to time zero. The next coupon at time two needs to go back two years, also using a spot rate of 10%, multiplied by 1.1 to the negative two power. The third coupon uses the spot rate R3, not R1 or R2. It uses 0 0.12. 1.12 needs to be raised to the negative three power. The fourth takes 1.12 because that's the value of R4 to the negative 4 power. And finally, we've got the final coupon of 5 plus the redemption value, which is assumed to be the face amount of 100. 105 needs to go back in time by 5 years. Multiply by 1 plus the unknown R5 to the negative 5 power. Okay? And actually, we don't even have to solve for R5. We could solve for 1 plus R5 to the negative 5 power, and then take its reciprocal to get 1 plus R5 to the positive 5 power. So we don't actually have to solve for R5 here. We don't want to. All right, so the rest of this is just calculator usage. I'm going to try to solve this all with my calculator without rewriting things. As you watch, you may want to write things down. I'm going to use storage features and try to be as efficient as possible, but you'll need to think with me here. Uh, this is the same as 5 divided by 1.1 which is that. I'll store that in register 1. 
1.1 to the negative 2 power is this times 5, store that in register 2. 1.12 to the negative 3 power is this times 5, store that in register 3. Technically, I won't need to use a storage feature here if I don't ultimately want to solve for R5. However, I think I'm going to anyway with the 1.12 to the negative 4 power because I'll store that in register 4, store 4, because I will need that up here. Here I'm dividing by 1.12 to the positive 4. That's the same as multiplying by 1.12 to the negative 4. Once I find 1 plus R5 to the fifth, I can multiply now by what's in what register 4 and then subtract 1 and I'll be done. So efficient calculator usage is what I'm thinking about here. So that's stored in, again in register 4. I do need to not forget to multiply it by 5 here. And now I'm ready to add these things. Add this to what's in register 1 plus what's in register 2 plus what's in register 3. What we see over here, this plus this plus this plus this equals this 15.4141 You might want to pause the video and write that down. Now I need to subtract that from 73.68. I'll put a negative sign in front of it and add 73.68 to get this. So what's on the left side now would be 58.2658. Then I need to divide both sides by 105. Divide this by 105. And this would equal then 1 plus r5 to the negative 5 power. I'm almost done here. I want to now take its reciprocal to get 1 plus r5 to the positive 5. And I, if I wanted to solve for r5, I'd take the fifth root of this, raise it to the 0.2 power. But I don't have to. Now I'll multiply what's in by what's in register 4, as I mentioned earlier, and then subtract 1. The final answer, and this is correct, r5 is approximately 0.1453. And I will make the remark that in the back of the book for Broberman and in the answer key they write 0.1452. And that's because they, they solve for R5 and they round it. So the rounding error gets compounded, so to speak. The true answer, if you use all the decimal places of accuracy, is actually 1.1453 instead of 0.1452. But, you know, it's pretty close, so you can see why that... A rounding error could could cause it to be off a little bit at the end.